this week's edition of Sheffield Steel, the lockdown interviews with uh, successful SMEs that have really taken it to lockdown. And um, this is an interesting interview because this has been a recommendation. Um, there was four or five people on LinkedIn that said that this this company and this guy in particular has really been working with um, the business owners in Sheffield to help them push through their businesses financially. So it's great to have uh, Sam on from Gravitate Accounting. Uh, Accounting, welcome, Sam. Cheers, John. Thanks, thanks for having us. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, for, <laughs> finally, we've got an accountant that's not a grey hair, no hairs. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, that will uh, long live that as well. Yeah, I hope I'm so. Sure. I hope so, buddy. We can't. Know. <laughs> but first and foremost, introduce yourself. Who are you? What does I think the the name kind of gives it away, but gives a bit more insight as to who you are and what you do. Yeah, so my name's Sam Newton. Uh, I'm uh, Sheffield born and bred. Uh, and uh, I last year I set up a company called Gravitate Accounting, as John said. Uh, we set up to uh, to be try and be a little bit different. Basically, we we try to go away from the whole um, annual accounts process and all that, line, and try to really get involved in businesses. So we really push um, like a high involvement, like FD offering services where where we're not we're not seen as that external party who you know, you know every time you speak to them you're going to get charged to, to for every conversation you have. We really want to be part of the business. So um, yeah, so it's all also up to 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 be a, a big almost be part of your team um, from a, from a finance perspective essentially. Love that, and it's not very rare that I get excited to speak to an accountant. I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> um, but from a couple of conversations with, that we've had in the last few weeks, it's it's really nice to see that fresh approach to accounting that it's not just the typical you know people get a bill at the end of the year and they go oh, 1400 quid i don't really know why i'm paying that but i get the same bill every single year so i'm assuming that i will do um, so obviously these are the lockdown interviews so what we're really talking about is how you and your business have adapted and changed and really pushed forward so i think the best place to start would be to Give us an understanding as to when you realized it was going to be an issue commercially. We all knew that it was going to be an issue health-wise, uh -huh. but there was a point in time where everybody realized, hold on, this is going to really impact the SME sector more than probably anyone else. No, yeah, 100%. Um, obviously, from the, from the start, we knew that our businesses, our, our clients were key. We're, we're a business where if our clients get through, we're going to be fine. So the key thing for us was, looking looking at all of our biz clients and saying look what can we do to, to those guys to help them get through it kind of thing um and i think the big one for us was we have a few quite a few clients in the hospitality area basically where whereby we knew that they were going to be from looking at italy and france i mean i've been skiing earlier in the season and we're seeing the um in france and we're seeing the effect it was happening and it was happening in new Europe, sorry uh, and so we, we knew what was coming. And so for those businesses, it was trying to make sure that they did every, anything and everything they could to be in that best position when it did happen. And then when they were locked down, what, what changes could they make to, to ensure that they were in a strong place when, it, when they got through it, essentially? So I think from that perspective, we were, we were on it early doors, looking what was happening in Europe and seeing how that was going to affect us and especially those clients and, and seeing what we could do to, to sort of maneuver around it and put ourselves in a strong position. Yeah, it's the, it's the same case with lots of people that are doing these interviews that, and I don't think that it's any coincidence that you're the lot that saw it early and did something about it because what, and I find it really interesting the first couple of weeks, let's call it the sort of the first of March. Um, I think probably last week in April, first week in March, Whereas what I knew at that point in time, there's going to be a real problem. And it was really interesting to take a step back and to watch what's happening. And, and you had a, a distinct gr grouping of people. You had the people that were just in complete denial. And um, with Britishness, you know, it's not going to break our shores. Uh, yeah. And just c continued and carried on regardless. You had the people in paralysis that just didn't know what to do. So they did nothing. And then you have the people like you and most of the people that have been doing those lockdown in, doing the lockdown interviews that have gone, right, this is going to have a massive impact. What do we need to do? What do we need to change? How can we support? And I love the fact that you said, how can we support our clients? It's almost as though 
your business was second hand at that point in time because I suppose there's an element that you knew that your job was ultimately to push your, your clients through it and ultimately that was going to help you and, and your business. Yeah, 100%. We, we knew that if all our clients got through, we, we'd be absolutely fine. And, and so the focus was all, all, all based around helping those guys. Um, and it's like, like you said about the blame and stuff like that, we have, there's um, one of the uh, sort of like training things that we see is acting above and below the line. And we see like above the line as being taking ownership and being accountable for, for what's happening out there. Whilst below the lines, trying to push the blame on someone else, like, oh, someone's, someone's brought this into the country, it's their fault and stuff like that. When really it's, it's happened, you can't change that. So we were, we were all about taking ownership of the situation and saying, what can we do? And what can our clients do to, 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 to be stronger and, and thrive through the situation? Taking my lingo already, Sam, you're taking my uh, lingo. Yeah. Um, so how have you adapted? How, uh, and maybe how have you helped your clients adapt as well? Um, so as a business, obviously, we, we are digital. So we were in a fairly strong position to start with. But one of the, one of the big things that... It was is important to us is the, the communication side of it. So, uh, as part of our like FD offering, we we sell ourselves as really hands on. We want to we want to delve really deep into the numbers, and the more we know about a company, the more we can add value, kind of thing. So, it's all about being hands on and involved in the business. But obviously, that that wasn't possible uh, like physically. So, we obviously switched to Zoom fairly early doors um, and got involved in that, but. And there was also, uh, we won, I, well, I, I'm an FD for a group of companies. So um, for those guys, it was, we got on teams uh, and it was just finding a system that worked basically because we, there, there's a lot of document sharing and stuff like that. So we had all that stored in one central place whereby we all could access it um, and it was, it was a live document so we could add to it. And there was obviously, like I say, we, from the finance perspective, we were redoing all the cash flows. And looking at how it's going to affect us, and like I say, some of them was positive changes to the cash flow. I've, I've had a couple of clients who were, who were really, really growing through it, and they've. We had one client who managed to borrow seven hundred and fifty thousand in C bills to grow, and that's because I know C bills is out there to support businesses who are struggling, but these guys are creating jobs. They're they're helping grow the economy, so. Which is as important as surviving. Of course, it's probably yeah. going to be more important going forwards. So, so, so we've got some guys who are doing really well out of it. So it's not just all obviously the doom and gloom. It's it's help, helping both sides. And like I say, it's it's exciting. So, so yeah, it was all about the, keeping that communication, keeping in front of people like this, face to face, um, when really we couldn't be physically next to each other. Um, and we had a lot of after the golf club as well, and we switched to Skype, and it was just what what suit with each business. So we had that side of it. Uh, and then we also had a, a WhatsApp group. So pretty early doors, I was bombarded with questions. And I, I always tell my clients, any questions, come to me, WhatsApp me, whatever, any time of the day, uh, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get you an answer kind of thing. Um, and that, that goes back to that thing about knowing the businesses. I, I don't want to ever get to that position where they are scared of asking me a question because the more I know, the more I can help. And the chances are, if they grow, the work I can offer them will grow. It's, it's all in it together kind of thing. So this, um, and, but the problem with dealing with hundreds of WhatsApp today, it was quite stressful and phone calls and everything like that. So we, we set up a group WhatsApp where we got all our clients in this one, one group and, and we were there sharing, um, and I, I, I say sharing, probably translating the information from the government really. We got, obviously got, from like every every day we get a half an hour snippet uh, and uh, in, in a speech from, from Rishi and the government and, and we were there just translating that saying that and just telling all our clients how to help them. But the real, the, I think the real exciting thing that came out of it was not only was well, I able to help my clients, but they were helping each other. So they were all chucking in snippets of information. They're like, oh, we've seen this. Anyone from Sheffield have you seen this? Uh, and it was it really was that team team effort that group and everyone pulled together and it was it was exciting it was it was really good to see. So we hold on a minute. We we've got an accountant with with hair that isn't great. <laughs> it uses WhatsApp. 
Did you say that you get everybody on a, like a monthly call as well? Is that right? Yeah. So I mean, we do. We try to do some webinars, things like that. So one of the big ones was like a business continuity web webinar, the kind of thing where where we'd strip strip it back and like I say, what business continuity for one business was, was how what how can we grow? What can we do? How can we change? Like, can we target new markets? And business continuity for other businesses was right. Let's minimise our cost. Let's Let's look at our um, like insurance policy. What what cover have we got in place? Uh, let's look what let's speak to our banks. Let's see how they can help us, and let's speak to our accountant and see how they can help us. So it, it, it was a case of breaking it down into real fine detail of saying where where can we save money and where is the support, um, and and bring that together all under one roof to help them be in a, a stronger position when, when this is all over. All right, so just to, just to clarify, accountant, without grey hair, got some hair, <laughs> uses WhatsApp, and webinars. You're a unique one, Sam. We're, we're pushing, pushing the boat out, I think. Pushing, yeah, pushing the boundaries <laughs> of a lot of their accounting. I love it. And, and, it is really, and there's no wonder that you got recommended to do this, because... It just sort of shows that modern, fresh approach. So there's definitely going to be people listening to this that go, hold on a minute, my accountant, I've not heard anything from them. I got the bill because it was yeah. about a year end. You know, we all get that 1,400 quid, 1,500 quid bill at the end of the year and go, hold on a minute, what's actually that for? So there's going to be people listening to this that go, I really like the sound of this. Uh, so what kind of businesses do you deal with? I th we, we deal with all types of businesses, to be honest. And I suppose the key thing for us is what we say. We we want to deal with businesses who um, who want that who want that support of an accountant. There, where, whereby they don't see it as like you say ticking the box at the end of the year. They want to get that intel, and we, we don't just see ourselves as accountants really. We're, we're business advisors because what what we're doing, we're not we're not just get telling them the tax to figure at the end of the year and when to pay it. We're we're setting we're setting up systems for people so. We're, we're, well, all our clients have access to, well, are set up on a digital cloud accounting software and have software to, to, to automate that process kind of thing. So the, the, the key driver is if we automate the, the bookkeeping and the boring stuff, I'm an accountant, I don't like bookkeeping, like no one likes bookkeeping. If we get that side automated, then we're going we're gonna to have a live, position of, um, a live position of how the company's doing and how it's performing. And then we can make informed decisions to help that business grow so um we deal with anything from tiny startups and i say to those guys I'm, i was a startup last year i've done all the registrations i've set up all the all the the schemes that i need to to be in like to to be compliant basically so i'll make sure you're compliant well you're i'm going to train you to do your bookkeeping because by understanding that automatic automated bookkeeping you, you know what's happening in your business. Um, and then every month, we're going to pick up the phone and we're going to have a conversation and say, look, what have you done this month? How can we change it? What can we do better? Uh, and we can back that up with the finances, which are which using the software we use, will be there for you. Um, so we deal with little startups like that, all the way up to um, businesses turning over. I've got one client who's targeting 30 million turnover next year. So um, those guys, it's, it's, we offer ourselves as outsource FD. So we say to them, look, do you want to, do you want to pay someone that 80, a hundred thousand pound a year and have it on your books? Or could we, could we break that down? And we do it on a, on an outsource basis where we'll do the, the high level work that you need. And we'll put someone in your, in your office here who uh, uh, a quarter of that cost, who can do some of the services that you're wanting to pay for because, and the combination of the two will save you money straight away but you've got this advice here separately where we're here to, to help drive that business forward from the finance perspective and help almost well, make part of the board meeting. So they, those senior manager meetings, we're sitting, sitting there giving them that high level advice, but at the end of the day, not with that, that fixed fee that they fix salary cost. So we, we really do cover, go on, sorry. The, the old school accounting te technique is compliance. Um, so I work in the B2B industry and I, I work with exactly the same types of clients as you. So anything from somebody that wants to start something up all the way through to businesses doing multi-millions that want to do more multi-millions. 
And the, one of the first things that I always look at with them is their finances. And a common thread is most people don't, don't know um, because they've got an accountant. And what, what the important thing is to understand that most accountants, they see their job as being compliant. And I, I always mm -hmm. see that we're looking for three things from an accountant. Compliance is number one. Right, you've got to stay legal yeah. and make sure that you, you're doing everything that you need to do on time. Well, that for me, that's only one of three things. The second thing is education. Because I, I have a saying, an educated client is, a, is an easy client. Yeah. So if I can trust my clients are educated, that I know they're not going to make mistakes very often. And the less mistakes they make, the more, the more they grow. From, so from a, from a finance perspective, the less mistakes they make, the more money they make. Mm -hmm. And the third thing is automation which is how can we speed things up? How can we make it less people reliant and more systems reliant? So I love the fact that you, you're sort of from the same philosophy. Yeah. There. You want to keep people compliant. You want to teach them some things and you want to automate what they're doing. Exactly, yeah. And, 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 I mean, that is, I think I might nick that off my website as well, to be honest. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I think we're not afraid. I, I'll sit down with a client and start and say, look, we can, we can if you say to me, I'm, I can, well, I say to them, look, can you make more money per hour running your business than you can paying an account, paying me or my team to do, to do even the bookkeeping side of it? So if, if they're saying to me, we're flat out every, all day, every day, then I'll say, look, we can do your bookkeeping for you. You, you can outsource it fully automated. All we ask you to do, is, to do is take a photo of every invoice that you, that you receive, forward on emails of any invoices you receive, and raise invoices from zero. That's all you have to do. But we say, look, it's, it's not the cheapest option. What I prefer to, the other option is we train you how to use the software. It's not, it's not hard. We'll train you to use the basics of, of, of zero and receipt bank and understand a little bit of how those cogs work. And then, and then we can do the high level work. So we're not, we're not really afraid to do the training side of if, if it. We, we let the client decide that. We say, if you want to do a bit of training, we'll do that part. And then a couple of hours a week, you're going, you're going to do the bookkeeping to stick to your side of the bargain. And then we're going to top and tail at the end of each week or each month and then have those conversations. So we can do the training side. But if they say to us, look, I can make more money per hour in those two hours a week um, by doing it, by getting you, paying you to do it and me making money for the business. And, and then I'm like, that's fine. It's, it's a win-win. Win. It yeah. Makes sense. So, so we're very open. All our pricing is done on a software where we say to our client, what do you want? And then they say, we want that service, that service, that service. And it, 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 it tells them, it'll say, this is your monthly fee and that's what you're paying for. And then, and then every so often you get a client saying, oh, can I get a bit of a discount? It's like, you can't get, no, you can't get a discount. But if you're saying to me, you don't want to pay that money, I, I understand that. So let's not have monthly management accounts. Let's have quarterly management accounts. because I don't want to sort of de devalue my service that I'm going to offer you and think, then be always thinking, oh, look, oh, they're not paying me as much. Like, I, I want to be able to say to them, look, I'm going to give you everything and I'm not going to, I don't want to give you 90%. So I don't want to give you that 10% off kind of thing. So, um, and clients love that because it, it's all set out for them there in exactly what they want. And then and if they say to me, look, I've got, we, we, we paid, agreed to pay some bookkeeping and now, now we've got someone on, on board of the admin team who can do a bit of that. Perfect. We're, we're not that off and we'll carry on. And as the business grows, we'll reassess it. Love that. So what, what adjustments have you made that you're going to keep on when all this is over? It yeah. will be over at some point in time. Right? <laughs> it will be over, but it will be. What adjustments are you going to... Are you going to keep that you've sort of gone, mm, that, that works really well, that we'll keep doing that? Yeah, I mean, obviously we are still a growing business kind of thing. And one of the, one of the sort of tricky parts of um, being an accountant, you'll see it from both ends, as from a client's perspective and a business perspective, is onboarding the client. Because um, the problem is from a, cli um, a client's perspective, is they're worried about it. They're like, oh, how does it work? How does you go from this accountant to another um, and so from that side of it we we, we set up this electronic system essentially which which automates that full process for us uh, and and for them as well so we used to send them out a form 
they, they work through this form and it, it gives us all the information we need about them. So I've, that, down into the finer details of any question we'd ever need to ask them, no matter what they wanted we, um, from their personal information, we've got it and it's done. So it's one form, fire through it, that side of it's done. We then um, speak to their accountants um, on their behalf or they can speak to them obviously and give them the heads up. Uh, and get all that, that information transfer, transferred over digitally. And then internally, that helps drive that system for us as well, because then we use forms that will automatically process our, our um, internal systems. And so I suppose that's helped us, and probably only, business, only accountants practices will understand that, so it's probably not that exciting. Um, oh, I think we get that. The, the scary yeah. part of changing accountants is knowing how to change accountants. So I love the fact that you've automated it for somebody, which is just a dead simple tick box. You just need to do this. Yeah. And, and then obviously it's then getting them, the, ne the next part of it is getting them on, on our account software zero um, and moving forward with that. And again, so we've, we've, we've pulled together like Loom videos to, of, of talk, of, to talk to walk people through it. And um, when it comes to setting up bank feeds, so the bank's automated and, and all, that, all that side of it. We've, we've got all these Loom videos prepared now for any client. So if they'll say to us, oh, we want zero receipt bank and we use Starling Bank, we've got, we'll just go boom, boom, boom. But that's how to see that, that's how to see that, that's how to see that. And then it's got them started. Uh, and and then obviously we say to them any questions fire them over kind of thing. So I think that that is a big change we've made where I, by what we've probably done before was go and sit with them for a day, make sure that's all ticked off, write down all the information there. Say oh, I haven't got that piece of information. Let me go and get that. And so it took their time and our time, but by having it all in this form and then the, to be able to send out this information to them of of the next steps, um, we've found it's worked really well. Absolutely. And look, Starling, who you mentioned then, are really going to come out of this very, very well. They are really, really, in a similar vein to you, really modernised the way that people do banking. It's been great oh. to see how they've been supporting people. Yeah, yeah I think um, uh, we, we've, so we've, we've got like a partnership with Starling, which is great because we, I mean, we use them. So there's, there's not much more of a, a positive thing you can say about a bank, to be honest. Um, the, the, other than that, like I say, you, you use them yourself. And I think what, what they do is incredible. Um, the way it's all in, in the app, there's, you no longer need um, a third party piece of soft, like a, a, I don't know, a card reader or whatever to make payments and stuff like that. And, and I think what they've got planned going forward from speaking to them is, is really exciting. So we've had really good experience, to, experience with those guys, but for the, for the guys who want that hands-on approach, we've also done a lot of work with NatWest. I think they've yeah, really excelled themselves as well. The, the big boys, um, I, I've been back with NatWest for over 20 years now. Yeah. Commercially. So I, I think they've really come out all guns blazing as well and, and supported people. And yeah. Uh, again, that's going to, and if you look at the recent studies and statistics in regards to what banks are lending, which are given the biggest approvals, NatWest are on top everywhere. And it's yeah. to that as well. So, so I, say, I, I say to my clients, look, what do you want? Startups, go down the Stalin route. You're going to get, you're going to get, um, the fees are going to be lower than anywhere else. You, you can set it up by talking to your phone for 10 minutes. Um, and you're going to have a bank account in, in a few days kind of thing. Great system. If, if you need, if you're at that level where you get, you need the business relationship manager, like I say, NatWest of, of, have smashed out of the park really like i think we've probably done closing in on two million pounds just to see bills loans and i'd say 80 percent 90 percent is with NatWest, west and they've they've been really good yeah and from from my perspective as well like I, I've, I've spoke to my bank manager all the way through this and not me speaking to them them actually yeah. to me which is just really refreshing you know they they really want to see because ultimately like you and like me if they're clients of our, the, the business, the banks of ours. So if you could go back to the 1st of March, knowing what you know now, mm. what would you have done sooner? What would you mind if you had done differently, knowing what you know now? I'd, I, I would say, I would say I, 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 I wouldn't panic because that, that's, that's what happened. That was what happened at, at the start, really. 
Um, and I would, I'd say, look, I, we are going to get through this. And like I say, I, I probably, when I was talking about above the line and below the line, I probably went below the line for a good couple of days, like, oh, my clients can struggle, blah, blah, blah. When really then it was, it took a few days to step up and really think, no, we're going to, we're going to find ways through it. Every, every business can, can change something, whether it is cost cutting or whether it is, um, like changing their business model slightly. I don't want to say the P word. Um, but, uh, no, we don't do the P word on these. We don't good, do good. I'm just, yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I think that, that, that would be my advice. If I, if I could go back, uh, I would say don't panic and let's, let's get this mindset in place first because I think that is, that is key. If you have the right mindset, then, then you're thinking differently. And, um, and I think as soon as we switch to that mentality, it was, it was, went from doom and gloom to, to growing and thriving in the situation kind of thing. So, love that. Uh, right, final two questions. My favorite two questions. You ready? Go on then. So, first one is what are you most looking forward to post lockdown? Let's say everything's back to the way that it once was uh-huh. in February, but sunnier. Okay. Oh. What are you looking forward to most? Uh. So, well, I mean, so on the WhatsApp group, I think we, we must have had a good week because halfway through the week, after probably two or three weeks of doom and gloom, there was a suggestion of a party when this is all over, like to say, to say thank you to me and thank you to each other for all the help they've done for each other. So having um, a restaurant, a bar and a nightclub on the books, I mean, it sounds like it's going to be a We've got a pretty good night like, outlined up. Very, it sounds painful as well. Let's say. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so I think, like I say, it sounds like all the clients are coming together and we're going to have a good shindig. So uh, can't wait for that. That sounds great. That sounds great. And, and last question. What have you learned about yourself? What, what have you learned over the last 10 weeks that you can... Because we're, we're living in a time now... Now, I don't think we're ever going to see again. Well, hopefully, touch, touch some wood, we'll never see again. So it's important that we take some personal lessons out of it. So what have you learned about yourself? Yeah, I, it's, it's a tricky question. Um, uh, let me tell you what I learned. Yeah. Appreciation. Okay. I think before all this, we were all fat and happy. Yeah. You can have, have anything on tap. Whenever you wanted, whenever you wanted. If you wanted to watch a film, you could you go to the movies. If you wanted to go out and have something to eat, you could. If you wanted to go out and get pissed, you could. Yeah. You could literally do whatever you want, whenever you wanted. Um, and I've had a lot of conversations with the older generation, and they've gone like, you've got no idea how good you've got it now. Like when we were young, we didn't have that. If we wanted to go to the movies, we had to save up for a bloody month. Um, so think about it. What have you learned about you? Uh, out of all, like I say, it's like I mentioned a few times throughout, it has, it has been a, a team effort kind of thing. And like I say, I wouldn't be able to get through it without my clients. My clients are my business kind of thing. So I suppose I am, I am really thankful for those guys. Yeah. Thankful to my, to my, to my client base. Cause at the end of the day, they've, they, they've stuck with me. When I'm saying to them, you can cut your costs. Like it, it, it's obvious that they could have cut my cost, but I think what they understood was how much value I'd added to them by, um, by reading that petition, but it still could have happened. So I am, I'm thankful for those guys who have stuck by me and, and helped us work together as this group uh, as a whole. And like I say, we're, we're all doing well through it. So, um, I always say there's no such luck, uh, no such thing as luck in business. You always make your own luck. So if your clients have stuck with you and not reduced reduce the fees yeah. take something out of that yourself because that, that probably means that they're getting more than what they're paying for uh, sam it's been really great to have you on the lockdown interviews thanks ever so much for sharing your story um again accountant not great heads, <laughs> not bald does webinars got whatsapp group there there's, must be something missing here no doubt there's going to be people listening to this that will be reaching out to you it's been really great and refreshing to speak to a modern accountant so thanks ever so much for being on sam Honestly, thank you so much, John. It's been great to speak to you.